Welcome back to News and Views. Anthony Mundine has apologised for remarks he made about the September 11 attacks a decade ago, but says he was taken out of context by a media out to ruin his reputation. Yes, the man addressed a media conference ahead of his fight with Bronco McCart on Sunday. Here's what he had to say in Las Vegas. Firstly, I would like to, would like to say I'm sorry for all the heartache I've caused to the loved ones of those lost in, on September 11. I'm sorry that people still have sisters, daughters, sons, fathers and mothers still abroad and in dangerous situations every day. No good ever comes out of war, only misery. It exposes innocent lives to danger unnecessarily. I'm also sorry that what I said was manipulated out of, out of context by the media and, and journos, doing their best to tarnish my image, trying to portray me as a bad human being rather than associating the mundane name with peace, charity, unity and love. So I just want to clarify that and I hope, hope you'll understand it. From my heart, and I think I could probably speak for a lot of Americans, we were waiting for you to make a comment like that. And I sincerely, sincerely appreciate it because, you know, that took our country to our knees in terms of emotionally. And um, I'm a veteran also of the Korean era war. And so, thank you. That means a lot to me as an American also. I mean, I, I've had friends that I've lost due to that war. So for you to step up and say that, I say thank you. That took a man. Yes, yeah, so a bit of an apology from Anthony Mundine. Now, let's talk a bit more about that and uh, everything else in the boxing world with Paul Upham. G'day, Paul. How are you? It's great to be here. Hey, nice to see you. We saw Anthony Mundine's uh, apology, and it seemed to be taken pretty well by McCart. Well, it did. And look, he had to do that. He had to come across straight up. And his first time, the first time in Las Vegas, it's been such a long career path to get Las Vegas. And so many Anthony Mundine fans have said to me over the last six years since he beat Danny Green, you know, when's the man going to go to America? Well, he's here now. Here's his opportunity. He said he's, he's aiming high. He said he wants to get a shot at Floyd Mayweather Jr. But he's got to start with Bronco McCart. And he's no easy pushover. He's a 41-year-old, a former world champion. He's had 54 career wins. Uh, that's the most wins that uh, Mundine opponents ever had. And look, this is no gimme fight for Mundine this weekend. Has he left it too late to go over to the States? Look, a lot of people are going to say, you know, why did he do this earlier? You know, it's six years ago, you remember when he was the king of Australia, that night he beat Danny Green. Now, that was the time we wanted to see Anthony Mundine on the world scene. But for whatever reason, the, the fights didn't happen. You've got to remember, the re one of the reasons this fight is happening now, because Vlad Wharton, Costa Zoo's former promoter, has stepped in and given him that opportunity. Not many of the promoters were really interested in the American ones um, putting a Mundine fight on. But Vlad's over there. He's given the man the opportunity to fight in Las Vegas. And, and he's got to make the most. In boxing, as I always say, you You've got to be perfect all of the time to stay on top. And Mundine can't afford to slip up. He must win this weekend and win well. So if he wins this and against uh, Saul Alvarez next, is it just a pipe dream, Cotto and then Mayweather, or is it a serious chance? Show us in the ring. If he keeps winning, of course, anything's possible. But he's got to get there and be impressive. He's got to make himself a commodity that pr other pr American promoters are going to want to put on, match their own fighters against. Now, Vlad Warden's going to be out there. And Vlad's obviously promoted a lot of great fights in America with Costa Zoo. He knows how the system works. He's actually one of Mundine's best assets in this attack on America to try and get an opportunity um, to try and break his way into the American fight scene that Vlad knows how the system works and he can try and make fights. But Mundine Mundine's got to do it in the ring. He's got to win this weekend. Look, most likely he's going to win on points over 10 rounds if he's at his best. He's got to win 8, 9, 10 rounds and look good doing it. Now, what can you tell us about Danny Green, the other big name, I guess, of Australian boxing? He's got to fight later this month on the 25th, I think it is. So it's a pretty big bout as well. Look, Wednesday week and Danny Green coming off those two knockout losses there. Uh, you know, there's a big question mark on where he's going with his career. He's 39 years of age. We talk about Mundine being 37. Danny's 39. He's moving back down in weight. He was fighting a cruiser weight, which probably wasn't his best weight. He was up against bigger, stronger guys. He's going to go back down to light heavyweight and test the waters there. Santiago is a, is a German. Danny Green at his best will beat him. But coming off those two knockout losses, Danny's got to show that he's still got it. And if he can win this fight well, hopefully the opportunity's there for a light heavyweight title shot later this year. So is losing a few kilos for Danny at the moment a good thing or a bad thing? He says he's never been quicker. 
the history shows in boxing that guys who've gone up and come back down don't always perform at their best. Roy Jones Jr., best example. He went up to heavyweight, became heavyweight champion, went back down to light heavyweight, did not handle it too well, was never the same again. Danny Green's got to show us that he can compete at light heavyweight um, against the best guys in the world. We know Danny at his best, awesome competitor, world champion fighter. He's got to show it again. Wednesday week in Perth. And he said, look, if I don't perform, this could be my last fight. Not only my last fight in Perth, it could be my last career fight if, if he doesn't perform. Another loss, and that's the end of the green machine. So there's a lot riding on this fight. In your Should he have retired after his last bout? I'm not going to speak for Danny Green. Look, he's a world champion fighter. He knows what's best for him. He's got a lot of good people around him. Uh, I know that his father wouldn't have him fighting if he didn't believe in him. So, look, we're going to see. We're going to see what sort of condition he's in. But after coming off those two knockout losses, it's not easy to re-establish yourself. And we'll see what the Green Machine's got. Danny Santiago, good journeyman fighter, but at his best, Green Machine wins. Yeah, well, Daniel Gill always gets forgotten. We always mention him third. We shouldn't, should we? Because he's got a big fight. It just happens to be in September, doesn't it? Huge fight. September 1, he's going back to Germany. Dan, he's the IBF middleweight world champion. He's going up against the WBA middleweight world champion, Felix Sturm, who's been around for a long time, had that memorable controversial loss to Oscar De La Hoya in Las Vegas. Daniel Gill said, I'm going back to Germany. I won my world title over there. I'm not scared of going back to Germany. A lot of fighters wouldn't do that. And he's going to go there. You know what? I'm going to tell you now, he's going to win on points. Daniel Gill's got, I'm so confident that he's going to beat Felix Sturm. He's at the peak of his uh, game now, 31 years of age. Daniel Gill is possibly the best middleweight in the world today, and he's going to prove it by going to Germany, and he's going to parlay that into a big fight in America. He's going to become the IBF WBA world champion. So do not miss that one on main event. Absolutely mm. not. Now, we always speak about Daniel Gill third. We always seem to speak about Billy Dib fourth. Now, he... <laughs> No one's going better than Billy Dib in Australian boxing and a, another big bout tonight. Well, he's IBF featherweight world title and you actually get to see him right now on Fox Sports 2. Uh, since we get off here, we're going to go and tune on to Fox Sports 2. He's fighting tonight in Sydney uh, live and uh, uh, Juan Antonio Rodriguez, uh, South, uh, Southpaw Mexican, 21-3. and three. Decent record. It's a non-title fight tonight, but it's a 10-rounder. It's an opportunity for Billy Dib to show the fans what he's got before he tries and snags some of those big big world title fights over in America. He wants to go over there and get promoted by Oscar De La Hoya again and defend that IBF featherweight world title. So big opportunity for the fans to watch on Fox Sports tonight, Fox Sports 2. It is, and that's the start of a big few days because uh, that mundane fight we're talking about is actually this Sunday, 11 a.m. Uh, on main event. It is Fox Sports Pubs and Clubs. As I said, Sunday, he's got to beat Bronco McCart and he needs to do it well. He can't do this by split decision. He's got to win, get out there and be confident and aggressive and win rounds and show his uh, speed and skills. And then Danny Green's got to do the same thing. Both of the big name fighters have really got their careers on the line because either one has a loss, that could be the end of them. So that one at main event July 25th. Just quickly, I want to get your take. I know we already spoke about Anthony Mundine, but I just want to get your take on written apologies. I feel like they shouldn't be sitting there reading out an apology. Look, it didn't feel sincere because it was written. I'm sure it was sincere. But. I think it was a very emotional time for Anthony Mundine. Uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure on him. He didn't know what sort of reception he was going to get going over to America. You have to give him credit. He took it seriously that he wanted to write out exactly what he wanted to express. And you saw the way the Americans took it. One of the, one of the uh, return servicemen stood up in the crowd and acknowledged uh, the appreciation. And Bronco McCard said that he respected him for it too. So I think it was the right thing. He did it well. You know, whether you do it, some people like to read out and make sure they get all the points done. But... You know, that's Anthony, that's the man Mundine. He does it his own way. He must be said, the Americans did take it very well. He did. Ben's got all his questions written down on the paper, but he didn't look at them once, this uh, <laughs> interview either. So, yeah, you don't need your notes, do you? Paul, no. we thank you very much for coming into News and Views, and uh, what a weekend of boxing coming up. Great to be here. All right, well, coming up on News and Views, we've got all the latest on the road to the London Olympics. That's with Joe Mackey.